Hello everybody and welcome back to Pop Plays Broken Sword. Uh, episode... what are we on now? Seven is it? Eight? Somewhere around there. Kind of losing track. Um, but yes, here we are. We've just been out as Nico to, back to the cafe and back to the docks and figured puzzles out and found out that her dad was part of the thing that is going on. So... Then she went back home and we apparently teleported here as George because he just appeared standing here. And, well, away we go. Let's talk to the weird flower lady again. Just this time as George. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good. It only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. The hell is wrong with that guy's bike that's making such a weird noise? Dude, your bike's broke. Get it fixed. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the damp. The landlord said he'd fix it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. Sounds like one of my old landlords. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. You say so. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. Mm. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden, but I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with an hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart? Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. <laughs> Uh, lovely. I like that it... Tall and thin as a broomstick. Not a rake like most people would say. A broomstick. I'm guessing she's a witch. Burner! Burner! About Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Well, thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. Well, that's that then. I guess this is going to be psychic powers or something. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My, oh my. What a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? I like that George Stowe was just as skeptic about this, ske skeptical about this as I am. Fortune telling is a load of, as Sheldon from Big Bang Theory would say, hokum. How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. 
That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. You're gonna die, you wrinkly old witch. Right, goodbye, crazy lady. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Then go kick the door in. Counts as a gentle nudge, right? Remembering the flower seller's advice, I push the door gently, just above the lock. <laughs> or twatted it full pelt. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Uh, please, uh, call me George. Fine, I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. A beer? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? But you're not going to do that. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. It just doesn't add up. It almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Tell me more about yourself. <sighs> There's nothing much to tell. Well, how'd you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought me my first camera. I was eight, and my parents had just split up. Oh, lovely. Did you live with your father? Yes. My mother went off with her new boyfriend. I didn't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted me to study art. That's why I went to college. Good for Did you. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arno Bellotta. The millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was lured to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about to add mine to the list, but stopped myself. I really didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Cachon. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. Indeed. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George. It's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy is wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. It's oh, not exactly his cheek. That, that was, like, on his temple, not his cheek. These people blind. Yeah, have someone's snotty red nose. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, was this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, George. It says La Rite du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Right, let's go look at that then. I have to go. 
Okay, I'll see you later. This away to uh, not that one, not that one, not that one. There we go. The, 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 the. Learn English, Frenchy. Oh, French in this case. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind, for in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible! You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie? <laughs> I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Tell me who owns this nose. Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. In that case, smell this snotty tissue. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Best Imer's number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. Toucans are great birds. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. In that case, give me the name of this guy. Do you recognize this man? Ah, oui. He was here this morning. That is the man to whom I sold the grease paint. I remember the scar on his face. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. I thank you very kindly, sir. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. What are you trying to do? Kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side grin. of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. Yes, I imagine that would be very painful indeed. Well, that's that found out. Uh... Did we ever ring the tailor? I can't remember. Let's go back to Nico's apartment and see if we can ring the tailor. I'm sure that that's something to do with Hi. it. Oh, hello. No, apparently I can't use her phone. Uh, screw you. Can you tell her what his name is? Because I oh shit, click through again. You, of Sorry guys. She wanna see the snotty rag? I found this tissue down the sewer. <laughs> That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint. Like actors use or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. Oh, I guess this isn't the place I, I need to, to be then. Okay. Then she's I... not letting me use her phone. Where can where can I don't know where. Ooh, the worker guy at the cafe. He had a phone. Let's see if I can use his phone. Go go to the cafe. Thank you. Yay, phone. Honk to you too. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, 
I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No, no, that's not possible. Oh, okay, uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. This guy. The man I'm looking for is called Khan. He bought a suit from you, remember? Mr. Khan. Yes, I remember him. Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room number. It was upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. Because that doesn't make you sound weird, saying that down the phone while you're still on the phone. But anyway, now that we've got that information, we know we've got to go to... What was it? The Hotel Ubu? Uh, we'll leave it there, guys. Uh, remember to uh, hit that like button if you liked the video. It really does help the channel. Leave any comments you wish to, whether it's abuse, constructive, not constructive, just a random hello to whoever the hell you want. I don't really care. Leave a comment. Uh, until next time, guys, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!